Hello, welcome to our Tech Talks. Our Builder Edition today is focused on understanding DevOps pipeline analytics with Splunk-based apps. Tech Talks series is a short series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help to create these best practices, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. Your speakers today are me, Tom Chavez, Senior Manager of Developer Marketing, and with me is Doug Urkula. Doug. Thanks, Tom. My name is Doug Erkla. I'm a field solutions engineer here at Splunk. And my background, first off, I'm a former customer of Splunk. And my, my main area of expertise is on man managing and measuring how software is delivered through the DevOps process. I am also the developer of the GitHub app for Splunk. Thanks, Doug. All right. In our short tech talk today, we will cover how to get value from Splunk with apps and specifically diving into apps for DevOps pipeline analytics. And after we'll do a demo, Doug will drive a demo for us. And after we will talk about additional resources available after this talk. So hopefully you might've already attended the first tech talk about Splunk base on getting more value from Splunk with apps. Quick summary, Splunk Base is our app marketplace where you can get more content that you can add into Splunk. That helps you get more data in and get database insights out. There's more than 2,800 solutions there today. And Splunk Base has a new powerful search, easy exploration, and curated collections like the one we'll dive into today. So today we'll dig into the apps for pipeline analytics for DevOps. This is one of those great new collections in the new Splunk base. You see the screenshot over there on the right. These are collections that are curated by Splunk and they include not only Splunk apps, but third-party apps also. And it makes it really easy to add these to your Splunk instance. So enough talking, let's go ahead and go into a demo where we can see how to get to this collection and we'll walk through it and learn about some of the apps that are inside of it. Over to you, Doug. Thank you very much, Tom. And I will now share my screen. So the really nice thing about Splunk Base is it's easy to, easy to access. Access. You could just go to splunkbase.splunk.com, and here it is. Now, if you've ever been to Splunk Base before, you might recognize this. This is the old one. This is the old out with the old in with the new. So the new uh, Splunk Base has got a really great right up front where you can search, but the power here is in our collections. And we've got collections for different things, whether it be security performance, machine learning, or per my personal favorite, the pipeline analytics for DevOps collection. And I am happy to say that I am one of the members that, that help curate this list and also a, 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 somebody who appears on this list. So it's easy to see we've got different apps that kind of fall into different areas for your DevOps and pipeline analytics processes. We've got everything from monitor, uh, measuring success with Dora metrics, as well as some security and DevSecOps specific areas as well. And you can have something in your mind like, oh, I know, for example, our dev teams, they, they live and breathe Jenkins. So right off the bat, we see the Splunk app for Jenkins here, and we can get a, we can get some information about, you know, what does this do? Like, you know, the basic summaries, details around it. But the nice thing with, with Splunk Base is the easy access to screenshots of, you know, what exactly am I going to get out of this? And the Splunk app for Jenkins has two kind of areas for it. It has an admin area and it has a user area so that different target people can get different value out of it. And here we can see for those admin users, we can start to see what is the infrastructure health of my Jenkins environment? How bad are my queues? Are we potentially having too many building nodes assigned and we could save some money, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it collects all across your Jenkins environment into one place for easy monitoring, easy management, easy reporting for your Jenkins environments. So here we can just see some more screenshots. We can also deep dive directly into individual Jenkins builds to see, you know, was there a specific test or a specific function of that Jenkins build that failed and be able to get the audit logs and the, and the console logs 
from that to be able to troubleshoot and see, okay, where did this go wrong? Um, again, with more views of what are the trends of my Jenkins jobs. And the, the nice thing with this is that unlike Jenkins, which might rotate logs very frequently to keep the, the environment healthy, because you're storing this in, in Splunk, you can retain those logs and trend for them for almost as long as you want. It, the, the retention is really up to you, giving you more and more power to drive better analytics long term from your build pipelines. So with that, um, I am going to back out to the collection overview again. I do want to quickly highlight a really fun app that is within this pipeline analytics app, but it helps actually multiple people, multiple products of Splunk, both Splunk Enterprise and Splunk Cloud that you may be using today. But if you're also one of our Splunk Observability Cloud users, we have this Splunk Alert, Observability Cloud Alert action for Splunk that bridges the two so that if you're storing your Jenkins logs like we were just talking in Splunk and part of your Jenkins pipeline is a deployment to like AWS or uh, GCP, you know, you can actually take those deployment markers from those logs that are being supplied to Splunk Core and send those directly to Splunk Observability Cloud so that your SREs that are using that product have that level of visibility. And don't just think about, oh, it's going to be just my DevOps stuff, but you can also bring in some of your DevSecOps tools or even just your traditional security events from Splunk IT Service Intelligence or Splunk Enterprise Enterprise security and send those over as events to Observability Cloud as well. So quick highlight on that one as well. I did quickly mention that uh, I am the author of the GitHub app for Splunk. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on mine here for a moment. Um, this is one of those apps that has some Dora metrics and visibility into what's going on within my GitHub environment, who's accessing what, what are my audit logs looking like, but also from a security standpoint, what are our um, security scans, code scanning, uh, dependency vulnerabilities looking like, all of that that GitHub already provides, but now that you can store it in Splunk, you can actually do a lot more with it than you could previously. And again, it includes what is the, what's the app going to do for me, but also I can come in and see, uh, here's some information about GitHub workflows or advanced security overview for GitHub Enterprise. Uh, and then audit changes here as well. And one of the cool things that, that they've added in the new Splunk base is this app ranking in different categories. So you can see that this app has got five stars. It's number, listed number two in the DevOps category and number 42 in the security, fraud, and compliance category. So you can get a little bit more information here than you could on the previous Splunk base. Um, there is the companion add-on for GitHub listed here as well. So the GitHub app is, is all about what's going on in your environment from a visualization and reporting standpoint, but how to get the actual data on, that's all coming through the Splunk add-on for GitHub. And then finally, uh, I want to jump into the JFrog platform uh, log analytics here under the DevSecOps area, because this is really going to start bridging around uh, the, both your DevOps practice as well as your security practice. So um, JFrog, the, the JFrog app here uh, will report on anything that's going on within JFrog. So which uh, bundles and um, artifacts are being created, um, new versions, who's pushing them, but also if uh, JFrog X-Ray finds known vulnerabilities, it can also flag them there and report those directly for Splunk uh, for use within your Splunk uh, enterprise security or just visualization within their app. And this is a very active one. And it is this one was de developed directly by our uh, friends over at JFrog. And you can see that listed here. So this is developed by JFrog, listed in the Splunk Splunk base collection for DevOps and pipeline analytics. So it's not just what Splunk builds. We want to show and highlight uh, what we build, what our partners build, or what our customers build. And that's really the fun thing about this collection is that it's a living and breathing entity. So this is continually getting added to as, as the curators find new apps. Um, they are adding to this list. So uh, there's more to come. So keep an eye on the pipeline analytics for DevOps collection on Splunk base. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Tom. Hey, Doug, before you leave your uh, screen sharing, that was a question that came in was, um, 
is there a place to find other apps that are related to DevOps, but just not in this collection yet? Sure. So we can just go right back to the uh, first instance of, of Splunk Base here, just the home page. Um, Let's say I didn't have it listed there, but maybe I'm a, I'm a Jira shop and I, I want to look here and I go, okay, I know I use Jira. Let me look for Jira. And we've got 11 results of different things. We've got some apps. We've got some add-ons. I do like to call out specifically the uh, Splunk add-on for Jira data center, as well as the Splunk add-on for Jira cloud, because I'm hoping to get those into the next uh, iteration of the collection. Um, but these are how you would get uh, audit log data out of Jira. And that's specifically if I'm looking for Jira. If I'm looking more just, okay, show me what DevOps tools I want. That's the fun thing right here on the left hand side, we have a specific DevOps category and I'd mentioned that earlier when I was talking about the rating of the GitHub app for Splunk and that it was number two in, in DevOps. So here we can come in here and see oh these are all of the DevOps apps that, that Splunk has categorized by their developers. And that's one of the big differences between what we see listed here on, on the category listing and what's in the collection. What's in the collection is put there by the maintainers of the, of the collection. The category is actually added as a, as a field within the Splunk base entry that's created by the developer of the app or add-on. So they're the ones that get to say, this is a DevOps add-on or this is a business analytics ad, uh, app or, or whatever. So by coming in here and using the category filters within Splunk base, you gain that broader visibility into what the app developers think their app should be used for. So. There's a lot you can see here. I've, I've highlighted a few um, and it just goes on and on. And there's 246 results. So there's a lot to choose from here. You can choose based on popularity or how new they are uh, and, and go from there. Cool. So that, so you can search for a certain name. You can search by the category. Um, I would expect that there are some that maybe the app owner hasn't tagged with the DevOps category. So being able to search by name is great, maybe for something in the security realm that's becoming part of the DevSecOps world. Exactly. And that's why having multiple ways to get to things is really important. So um, if you know exactly what you're looking for, you don't have to wade through um, you know, any of the category listings. You can just go and search directly for it. But if you're like, if you are more of the, oh, well, we, we want to do some, some work in the DevOps and start monitoring, like our, our management said, we have to start focusing on getting insight into how our code goes from an idea to how it actually runs in production. Then you can go to the collection for inspiration and find out, okay, what is available for me? And then you can start to see, okay, what are the use cases? And you know what? Maybe if uh, if there's not a specific app for you, you can learn from what some of these others do. And like I always like to say, good artists copy, great artists steal. So um, you can learn from what other apps and add-ons are doing to build your own. True. Yeah, right at the bottom of the page, there's a link over to um, how to build, uh, actually on the homepage, uh, to uh, building your own app and uploading it into Splunk Base. So, um, that is something that some people might want to learn how to do from our dev site or such. So um, it's a, um, there it is. Don't find the app, build it. And with inspiration from some of the other apps that are in Splunk Base. So cool. Well, thanks for that uh, great demo, Doug. Uh, we've just got a few more slides to end the talk here. So I will bring back up my video once I find the share screen and share my presentation. All right. So some of those additional resources that you can reference, of course, the Splunk Base site itself at splunkbase.splunk.com, uh, this collection and the other collections that are available on that page. We have one more upcoming tech talk that'll come out the week after this, talking specifically about uh, using the security apps to build security, as well as how they integrate with our premium security solutions and you can follow the URL that is there, and a link out to how to build an app for Splunk Base over on the dev.splunk.com site. We have a bunch of community resources in addition to just the technical and reference information on dev.splunk and in Splunk Base, 
And if you become a member of our community, you can search for things in our answers area, Splunk Answers, just by using the tag Splunk Base and find out uh, what other people have answered about Splunk Base or ask your questions there. Uh, you can see other tech talks that are available in the builder section, as well as beyond our other series of tech talks for Splunk Enterprise and Splunk Cloud and admins and observability and such. And if you are inspired for something that you'd like to see in Splunk or Splunk Base as a feature, you can submit an idea to our ideas portal and other people can search for your idea, vote it up and put it into our uh, list of idea of things that we that our customers want to see in our products, uh, as well as you can look for other people's ideas and see them and vote them up so that they get some love and support and get a higher uh, rating when our product managers are looking at what to do in the next versions of Splunk. So it's a great place to see what ideas people have and put your ideas in and, and uh, vote them up. In this builder series, we do have one more talk. Like I said, on the 24th, we'll release our security solution talk. And as well on the 31st, if you do end up building an app and need to test it for the cloud, we have this product that's in preview called Splunk Cloud Developer Edition, which is a special version of Splunk Cloud tuned for developing apps. It's got testing and monitoring and, and uh, visibility tools that let you see that you're covering your app fully when you're testing it in cloud. Otherwise, most of our developers just build their apps on Splunk Enterprise, which can be downloaded to your laptop or to a server. So, like I said, uh, we are open to questions. Uh, after this talk over in the uh, answers.splunk.com, uh, any questions that have come up now, we covered that one about um, how to find other apps in the DevOps category or beyond. Um, but here's a question that we get a lot, which is, um, are these apps free or do people have to pay for them? I'll let you answer that, Doug. So the majority, all the, all of the apps that, that you saw today on the pipeline analytics uh, collection, all of those are free. And the majority, I would say 99.999% of apps on Splunk Base are also 100% free. The only ones that are not free are those Splunk premium products like enterprise security that those do have an additional cost and would have to be talked to with your with your sales team but they are on Splunk base if you do need to download them once you have that entitlement but uh, I think the number of those apps is literally I think I can count on both hands so um, not really not really I only call it out because there are a couple big ones there that if you if you came back later and said, oh, you said they were all free. Well, OK, there's like five that aren't so. Yeah, some of our third parties do have um, apps that are not for free, but they're hidden from view. So they're only visible once you are entitled to them. Um, so Doug's right that it's I'm not sure it's quite ninety nine point nine 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 percent, but uh, most of the apps in Splunk base are free. You'll you'll know it's not free if you try to download it and it says that you're not entitled to do it and it tells you how to get an entitlement. So awesome. Thanks, Doug, for that. With that, we will go ahead and wrap up this tech talk. Thanks so much for attending. We appreciate you, our customers and prospects for taking a, taking a couple of minutes out of your day to learn about Splunk Base and how to use it to get apps that add value to your Splunk. Uh, get more information in the other tech talks and we'll see you in the next tech talk. Thank you.